The big problem heliocentrism is that the Earth rotates once every 24 hours creating night and day. During the period of a year the Earth makes one rotation around the Sun. This means that when one side of the Earth is having daylight at 12 p.m., six months later it will be on the opposite side of the Sun, the same side of the Earth will then no longer have sunlight at 12 p.m. According to most flat Earth models the Sun is much smaller and closer. The Sun is around 3,000 miles up and the flat Earth map has the North Pole in the center and Antarctica 360 degrees around, on the outer edge. The Sun is circling above the flat Earth plane and lighting up only a certain distance, much like a small spotlight in a dark room. This might be difficult to understand but if you try things like this in 3D software it's actually pretty easy to make a light source that lights up only one side of a big disk. During the year the orbit of the Sun changes. For six months the circle will get bigger and bigger, and the sun will move faster and faster, for the next six months the circle will get smaller again. That's how seasons work on the flat earth. When it's summer at the North Pole the sun is circling above the Tropic of Cancer, when it's winter at the North Pole the sun is circling above the Tropic of Capricorn. This explains the 24 hours daylight at the North Pole but 24 hours light in Antarctica is impossible according to the flat earth model. In 1492, Columbus set sail for the New World based on the assumption that Earth was round. Why not? After all, according to historian Jeffrey Burton Russell, Onward believed that the Earth was flat. But nearly 500 years later, an American man was planning a voyage based on the exact opposite assumption. Mike Hughes, a 61-year-old limo driver, was going to launch himself into space to prove that Earth is flat. Mechanical complications and the federal government shot that idea down, however. For now at least. Hughes isn't alone in his theory. Thousands of people, from musicians to football players, believe Earth is flat, and that the world's elite are duping citizens around, across. The globe with a globulist conspiracy. How is that possible? Many cultures in world history conceptualized the physical world in ways that didn't include a spherical Earth. The ancient Chinese believed Earth to be a flat square, and that only the heavens were spherical. In multiple Indian models of the physical world, Earth was comprised of four continents surrounding a mountain. And the ancient Norse peoples pictured Earth as a disk floating in the middle of a sea inhabited by a giant serpent. These ideas, however, were first challenged as early as 2,500 years ago. In the 4th century BC, Aristotle provided some of the first evidence showing that Earth was round. Ships disappear hull first when sailing over the horizon, Earth casts a round shadow on the moon during lunar eclipses, and different constellations are visible at different latitudes. Aristotle's evidence would be corroborated and elaborated upon extensively over the following millennia. But it seems that nothing, not even GPS technology or manned space flights, can convince some people that Earth is round. In the modern era, the Flat Earth movement started in 1956 with a young British man named Samuel Shenton. Inspired by a 1981 book titled Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe, Shenton founded the Flat Earth Society believe that the Earth is flat. So what exactly do modern Flat Earthers believe? When the world is disc-shaped. According to Flat Earthers, the world is a disc with edges beyond which no one knows what exists. The Earth is surrounded on all sides by an ice wall that holds the oceans back. This ice wall is what explorers have named Antarctica. To our knowledge, no one has been very far past the ice wall and returned to tell of their journey. What we do know is that it encircles the Earth and serves to hold in our oceans and helps protect us from whatever lies beyond. Some believe an infinite plane lies beyond the wall. Some believe you'd fall into outer space if you crossed it, which seems to be a tough feat, estimates vary, but the average proposed height of the wall seems to be something like 150 feet. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and share this video.